to jump 1,000 cars. Sir, you have a 1,000 cars. I don't think I'd attempt to try this stunt. Or we, we, we owe this horsepower to Uncle Sam. Oh, Too many car. car. You know, roses would be... Uh... Like, I put my beer belly on it. Yeah. And you can't immediately tell somebody how many cars you have. You'll really give those uppity yuppies something to think about. Stay on the bar. Don't go yeah. off the bar with your Bronco. 1980 Volvo horns. What's right? Like, me, me. Yeah, I want a man's coolant. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I thought it'd be small. It's for a small car. And I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's still an automatic transmission. They're never going to be light. It's definitely going to have to crash. Starting off with Brad buying another car. That's the West. <laughs> Internet. You know, is this a Nigerian oil print? Uh, I also wish you drove a tan Camry. Anyways, anyway, that, that's har- a horrible, very horrible podcast content. A very a inside joke. They'd love to be driven hard. All right. Welcome to another episode of Auto Off Topic. Feels like we were just here, Brad. I mean, it's been a full week. It was last Wednesday. Yeah, it went fast, though. I mean, I guess that's an individual thought. Yeah. Because it didn't feel I mean, it I, like a uh, whole week to me. I don't feel like it's extra early being here. I feel like it's uh, been a week. I guess. I was off the last two days. Oh, so that's probably why. From work. Vacation, yeah, maybe. Time. Was uh, I saw an eclipse. Ah, I see one every day I walk outside and I get a annoyed to be she. Broke me still. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, you took a day off and went up to uh, the path of totality, correct? I you did. Know, you and everybody else in the northeast went up the same place. I don't blame them because it is pretty rare to see an yeah. eclipse so. And generally, I don't know, it was like, yeah, it was a really bad traffic jam. It wasn't like a normal traffic. Like people were just kind of like, whatever, like nice. Like nobody's like being really annoying. Oh, they were all nerds going up to look at the sun. So they're all nice people. You can definitely tell it was a lot of people that don't normally drive on the highway. Okay. Or in traffic. It just. It wasn't like a normal. I've, I've never seen. It wasn't like a normal weekend going yeah. up north where it's just bro dozers towing boats. Well, it was like um, at first. All right. So we went to northern New Hampshire, uh, which is normally like three hours. Uh, Burlington, Vermont would have been about like three and a half. And they're expecting 100,000 people there. There was no way we we're going to get in there. This is a decent sized city. It's not Vermont, the biggest full. city. Vermont, Get out. Yeah. Uh, but you got to go up 93 from Boston, pick up 89 in Concord, and that brings you over to like Vermont. Otherwise, you got to drive all the way west and go up 91. So if you're coming from Boston, everybody's going up 93 to 89. So traffic sort of backed up there at the 93 tolls and 89. But it felt like... I was like, oh, this is like 4th of July traffic. Like, if I'm coming up here on 4th of July weekend, this is what it's like. Not that bad. And then we got past that. Wasn't that bad. We're like, all right. I'm like, I know where it's going to slow down, though, because we got to go through Franconia Notch, which is up in northern New Hampshire. It's where 93 cuts through a notch in the Adirondack Mountains. Yep. <laughs> and they call it Franconia Notch. And it gets down to one lane north and south. Uh, which is not going to be good. <laughs> no, definitely not. So, uh, New Hampshire has not renamed their exits by mileage yet. Yeah, they're one of the last holdouts, uh, if not the last holdout. There's a whole thing about it. Yeah, like the, the exits are very important to people. Um, so from exit 25 to exit 35, which is not 10 miles. Uh, I actually couldn't tell you how many miles it was. I forget. Hundreds of miles. It's not super far. Like on a normal drive, it would take you 30, 40 minutes to cover that distance. Okay. It took us two hours. Rad. Uh, and then as soon as we got through, like as soon as it got down to one lane, traffic just moved along. Like people just couldn't merge. And that's what the holdup was. 
we literally got on the other side of the notch and there was no traffic. So bizarre. Because it goes um, back to two lanes. But anyway, we got to where yeah, it goes back yeah. to two lanes after. But there was like nobody on the other side. It was like no it's like the way it is normally up there. Well, there's not that many cars. So whatever, it's fine. We got to where we're going. We watched it. It's pretty cool. Uh eclipses, if you ever have the chance. I would go see one in totality. It, the next one, I think, is twenty twenty overseas or something. Twenty twenty nine is the next one that's overseas. Yeah, the next one over the United States is like twenty forty five or something. Twenty forty four. Well, I'll uh, be into my retirement by then. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, I'll be retired. Yeah, um, <laughs> you have to go watch it. Yeah, so we're like, well, we might as well try. So we only got like 40 seconds of totality because we're just just inside of it. We weren't quite in the middle, but it was enough to to get the, the feeling of it. it. Sure. It was pretty cool. Out here, and we the, did not get any totality, the, so we didn't even notice. No, you could see it. Then we had pictures. You could see the shadows. Well, Andrew, I was working and I forgot and I didn't oh. notice anything. Oh, okay. So... Yeah, it it it's weird. Like you're standing outside, it like gets, it starts to get dark as it's happening, and it it feels like you're looking through like window tint. Okay, you know how that like changes the light. Sure, it's like a polarizer on your face. It makes it darker. Yeah, but everywhere at once. Hmm. Strange. Uh, and the coolest part is, um, right towards totality. It there's like a little fleeting bit of light that comes off and it makes the moon look like a diamond ring. They call it the diamond effect. It's very, very cool looking. What's very cool is that you were able to take your son and even if yeah. he's not old enough to remember this as he, as he ages, he'll always have like pictures of him there. And the next time one happens, he'll be about your age now. So, Oh boy. That's kind of cool. I wasn't trying to make you feel old, yeah. but you know, in twenty forty something, <laughs> you're going to be old. I so what can I tell you? I was on the fence about going, and then I was like, "Oh, the next one's twenty years." It's like uh... more than twenty years. You <laughs> said, oh, "I guess he won't be your age. He'll be twenty forty. He'll only be twenty. Never mind. Scratch what I said. My yeah. math is but piss anyway, poor at best tonight." Um, listener, Steve, Disco Steve. Steve Booten met us, met us there. Uh, they got stuck in a lot of traffic, him and his wife, Katie, and her brother. But it's okay, because they were they in the it. path of comfort in your old infinity. Yes, they they drove up the Q45. It drove all the way up yep. there. Imagine that. It drove all the way back. No Didn't issues. Didn't kill their whole family like the guy Great who said car. he was going to buy it from you. Um, but I was smart, because he sat, he sat in the same 93 traffic. I was like, dude. I've been up here like a bunch of times. Like I know the roads. We'll just take back roads. We're not going to go back on the interstate. Like it's even if it takes us an hour longer than a normal three hour time, it will be less than sitting on the interstate. For sure. So we went across two. So now we're far, we're far enough up that we're north of Mount Washington. So now as we turn to head west to go back, uh, sorry, east to go back towards. We're going to head towards North Conway and come down that way. You're looking at the backside of Mount Washington. It's so beautiful up yep. there. Like this time of year, it's all covered with snow and it was bright, beautiful, sunny day. Mount Washington's really awesome looking. And from this side, the north side or the kind of the east, north, I don't know, whatever. We're on the opposite side of the auto road. You can actually see the observatory at the That's top, cool. unlike when you're on the other side. So... You take that down, you go into Gorham, New Hampshire. We were trying to go to, I think you went there with us one time after one of the hill climbs. We went to Moat Mountain. Yeah, 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 North for Conway, sure. The brewery. I forget after what. We were going to go there. And then. It must have been after the rally. Because yeah, it would have been after the hill. Being in the no, it no, would have been after the hill climb. Hmm. Well, that makes sense too, because there were rally um, cars in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. So we come around the corner in Gorham to go down 16, and there's a brand new brewery there that I'd never seen before. I was like, Oh, let's stay. Let's stop there. Uh, it's like it was like big day brewing. Great food. Nice beer. We hung out there for like an hour and a half. We're like, this is a good idea. We'll let like traffic disperse. Sure. 
So we left on like 6.30, drove all the way down 16 through North Conway. There's a little bit of traffic in North Conway. I know a shortcut to go around North Conway. You come back out on 16. You just take like a back way around. Then you just take 16 all the way down. You pick up 95 when you get to New Hampshire. And then it's like literally 45 minutes to our house. Nice. And we're home by 9.30. Beautiful. No big deal at all. I I sent to our Discord. Come join the Discord. There was a Boston.com article. Uh, there were people that left probably right after the eclipse. So at like 4.30. Sat in five hours worth of traffic just to get through Franconia Notch. Yeah, that's wild. And then another three hours back to Boston. That's uh, that's a lot of people. They're, they're saying they didn't get through. They didn't get home till like three in the morning. That's pretty insane. <laughs> So you guys had a nice relaxing yeah, back road cruise and a dinner and you still made it home before that. Yeah. Technically, yeah. Steve, but only because Steve I and Katie I, I just, probably made it home before them and they had to go all the way to Connecticut. They did. He, I think he made it home by like 1130 because he's a little further, but you know, still, uh, I guess just, I got lucky in my knowledge of that area. Yeah. You're like all these years it's, of planning. I know why now. Well, the thing is, it's like it was in. It's very nice up there, but it's desolate. And I think what they were really worried about is a lot of the totality was in northern Maine. So we've talked about this on the podcast before. You, me and our other friend Jordan, we did an overlanding trip in July. In the area where the totality was like through Millinocket yep. up that way. Right. We would drive. We'd be driving all day in the middle of the week and we wouldn't come across other cars for hours at a time. Yeah, right. For sure. So all the, all they were like, people were worried about is that like people from the city would just like jump in their cars with GPS and just head out in the wilderness. <laughs> it's like, and it's right now it's mud season. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a true concern there, too, because <laughs> all those roads are marked roads. Yeah. They're just not maintained. Yeah. Nope. Yikes. And listen, I'm not anti EV, but maybe you should have taken a gas car yes, on Monday because <laughs> there are people that there are not a lot of charging stations up yep. there. And there are people that are waiting six and eight hours to just to charge their car. Yeah, because it's not a populated area. So there's not a big need for a lot of chargers. So that. Nope. There's enough for the cars that are normally there, but not when you bring. And there's in probably even enough two million for the people. amount of people who come on like a holiday weekend. There's just not enough for yeah. this extra, extra big amount of people. So, so I, I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't have handled that. No, <laughs> that type of anxiety. Yeah. Uh, Cause I literally, I filled up the Volkswagen at the gas station by the house, drove it all the way up there and back and had a quarter tank left. <laughs> and that's the use case like, we talk about for electric cars. Like electric cars are cool, but Neither one of us are at a point where we would want one as our primary vehicle. Well, if I was just going up there for the weekend, like a normal weekend and just staying at like a hotel. Sure. No right. But what deal. I'm saying is, but not, <laughs> we don't think that we could go with just an electric car yet. Well, I wouldn't, I, I couldn't do that without serious planning. Sure. Like, I don't know. That that was that's my problem is I'm impatient. I was so annoyed when we we're in Daytona. I was trying to like I need to be doing something else while this is charging. Right. This is frustrating to me. <laughs> and, if I have to sit here, I have to be multi. And it would have been even worse because you had, you know, the whole family and a toddler with you. So sitting yeah. six hours in the car not moving would have been uh, an absolute disaster. <laughs> so not that he's not a great kid, yeah. but toddlers have their limits no matter what kid they are. <laughs> He was getting a little antsy on the way up in the traffic, and then we finally convinced him to fall asleep, and he fell asleep uh, as we, and he slept till we got to where we were going. Because I, I also figured, I was like, you know what? I bet, you know, there's not a lot of places to like, just go, and there's not a lot of public places to like go and watch, but I bet if you're driving by people's houses, they'll just be like, 30 bucks, 20 bucks, park in my yard. So I brought cash, and sure enough, we came across this uh, woman and her kid, and they apparently had access to this 
I mean, I don't know. Maybe they didn't own the property, but they made 30 bucks off everybody that drove up this road. <laughs> um, and it was at the top of this hill. There was like a church up there, but there was like 20 other cars up there. And we all just hung up, up there nice. and watched it. Pretty awesome. But yeah, I, if I had been somewhere where I could have seen like the, the totality of it, I may have thought a little bit more about going and seeing it, but it would have been a whole trip from here. So I'll think about it in 2040, whatever. What ended up being initially New England had like the worst chances of a clear day and we ended up with the best clear day. Yeah, all the pictures I saw looked pretty wonderful. So from New England. So it was like the weather kind of flipped a switch. We had to talk about the weather. Um, got a little bit warmer. Now, I guess I'll jump right into Project Car stuff. I was going to say, since it's warm, did you do Project Car stuff yet? Uh, I, I'm tired I did. of carrying this so, whole thing. Yeah. Uh, again, our buddy Steve was uh, he was out doing some junkyard scouting down where he lives in Connecticut. And he texted me the other week. He found a, a second gen Montero. With cloth interior, just south of Hartford, and I was like, "Ooh!" So you know, I happened to take yesterday off also because I wasn't sure where we were going to end up after the eclipse. Like, if we had stayed somewhere, or if it had taken till three in the morning, I would have wanted to sleep yeah, in. Of course. Um. So I was like, "All right, I'm not going to wait till Saturday because it's going to be rainy. I'm going to go down Tuesday." and get this because it's like three hours down. So I jump in the Montero. You know, I didn't leave. I probably should have left a little bit earlier. Of course, I sat in some more traffic, which was fun. But anyway, got down there. Luckily, the truck was still there. The interior was still in it. Steve helped me pull it. Uh, It's like it was an early, I'd say... It's probably like a 93 or 94 LS uh, because it didn't have the passenger airbag. I forget what year that started. Probably 94, 94, 95. I think actually, you know what? The rules were different for trucks, so I don't know. Yeah, they were. That's why it took so late. I bet 95 on those trucks is when they went to an airbag. I bet they just waited till they had to do OBD2. It was like OBD2 airbags. So that was probably like a 93 or a 94. Um, and it's funny because they posted pictures of it in the group, Montero group. Like, hey, there's a truck here. Go grab parts. And I was like, it's an early truck. And somebody's like, oh, it's not actually. It looks a little bit like a, it's like a 94. I'm like, well, okay, the one else, what is not an early second gen? I mean, that is an early second gen. They showed up here in 92. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To me, that's an early second gen. 92 to 94 is early. A 95 to 97 would be mid. And then a 98 to 99 like mine or 2000 would be late. Yeah, I would say the same. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, I got all of my parts that I wanted. And then, you know, posted it so other people could go find stuff. And of course, people are like... I said right in the post, like, I'm not near it. I'm not getting you parts. Like, Here's where it is. For me? And of course, there's always people that don't read. Yeah. Like, no, I don't. Like, heard her. No. Yeah, people are coming. Um, it's weird. It, I think because it's a base, the back seat is not split fold. It's just a bench that folds, but it's cloth. And it's in better shape than my leather. So whatever. It all needs to be shampooed. And the front seats are in pretty good shape. Uh, the driver's seat's actually manual. Mine's power. So I'm going to have to do some like... Make sure you can swap the base over. I think I'm going to do some... Yeah, I'm going to do some mixing and matching. Like the rear armrests are like torn up. But like my leather ones are okay. So maybe I'll have like hybrid like leather armrests in the back. Oh, whatever. Make it work. Yeah, that'll be fine. It's all, it's all tan. It's all the same colors. Close enough. Yeah. Um, but what I was really stoked on is I opened up the little hatch under the floor. Every time I go to the junkyard, I look in there and I haven't been able to find the factory jack. And this truck had the factory jack. Awesome. And it's cool because it's like an orange bottle jack. 
that hides in the bottom Which of the I truck in the that back. nobody will ever see. Yep. But it also hides in the bottom of my tool bag. And I went out. <laughs> I walked out with it. Uh, FBI. <laughs> it's everybody knows that's how the salvage yard works. You buy some stuff. You take some stuff. I mean, they charge so much for little tiny things. Exactly. Uh, I do not feel bad. They make it up. When they charge eighty five dollars for a, you know a, a tiny little piece, then it makes you feel better. Yeah, but it was like two hundred thirty bucks for all the seats. That's not too bad. No, it wasn't too bad. Because <laughs> that's the other, I'm like, I remember I looked and I found that one in, in Arizona that had just the back seats, and I was like, yeah. Plus, getting them and home. I was from like, Arizona. how how would I even have gotten yeah. them home? <laughs> Um, I didn't take the cloth jump seats because I don't even use the jump seats. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not buying those. So those are still in the truck. Yeah, you don't need them. You don't have a, yeah. you don't have an army of kids. You have one. Uh, I've got the leather ones that came with the truck, anyways. If I really wanted yeah, you to could put use them in, pinch but... if you had to. But it's cool. You've been, you've been after cloth seats for some time, so it's good that you found some. Yeah, because my driver's seat bolster is just like torn apart down to the foam. So, and cloth yeah, is just these nicer. ones are kind of grungy looking, but I think they'll come back with some. Uh, do you have Do you have a shampoo or a steamer? In. I believe I have a steamer because okay. we bought the. It's made by Bissell. I think I've talked about it in the podcast before. I think it's the one that I think Stephanie bought okay. it to use on our couch. Yeah, it works. It works really well. I'm a huge fan of it. So I got that. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, Steve was looking for a, a seat for his van. He just bought, but there was nothing there. Nothing worth grabbing, which happens. Sometimes uh, you go with someone and they strike gold and you strike out. But, you know, sometimes whatever. you don't. Yeah, uh, it's just surprising because you don't really see the older trucks at lots up here or yards up here. So, no, most of them rotted away too many years ago. Yeah, this one I looked under the back, um, the rear from the axle back, the frame was basically That's gone. The same place that my Montero was pretty rotted behind the frame, behind the axle. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, because I think all of the salt spray from the tires just hits up there. It just sits. It didn't, yeah, it didn't have a trailer hitch on it, so it didn't seem to be backing into the ocean. Speaking of, my old truck is for sale currently, so if you're in Connecticut and uh, want to buy a rusty Raider. Oh, it made it all the way down to Connecticut? Yeah, that's where it's listed. Don't forget, we drove it all the way to Vermont. Yeah. Also, you say what you will, but I did daily that for two years. Doesn't mean it's not cursed. No, but it did run for a solid two years straight. And then once I cooked the motor that time, it I should have done something different to fix it instead of trying to patch it together. I don't think it's cursed. I think it was just cursed by my, my lightweight wallet. It's probably the key. Still, cursed. I mean, I wouldn't buy it. It needs, a, it needs framework. Where the right rear shackle mounts to the frame, it's pretty uh it's pretty pukey. And according to the seller You sold it for a fair price for the work it I needs. sold it for seven hundred dollars. It ran, it drove, yeah, it had which... new brake lines, um everything worked, but it needed to have the frame repaired. The shocks were new. The front shocks were new. Well, at that point they were probably three years old, but they were newer. The yeah, actually all four shocks. Yeah, all the brakes, all the shocks, all, all the maintenance had been done, but it needed work on the frame by the right rear shackle. I sold it for $700. Yeah. Uh, the person selling it now wants $1,500 and claims yeah. they spent 3000 to get it. Now, according to the seller, because uh, another friend of the show, Chris, was talking on the Discord, again, join the Discord, about he had a message to the seller about the car before he realized it was mine. Um, and the seller had said that he bought it from a friend who bought it from a coworker. So it's had at least three owners since I've had it. 
but and supposedly somebody along the line sold it for three thousand bucks. So somebody came up came up on it, but it wasn't me. So I, I mean, yeah. technically, I came up so, on yeah, it. Yeah, somebody got. Bamboozled. I paid four hundred bucks for it. So yeah, you put twelve hundred dollars worth of parts in it. Probably, probably. <laughs> I don't have a spreadsheet, so I'm going to say I won. <laughs> I mean, technically, I think I did because again, I daily do things for two years, so <laughs> it's fine. I don't keep score because yeah. I don't want. I don't. Know. I do not want to know. <laughs> I only want to know if my intention is to buy something with the sole purpose of getting it running and moving it on. But if I'm owning it for me, my full balance doesn't matter. You know, I I paid what twelve or fourteen hundred bucks for the blue Colt. That's what it cost me. It doesn't matter how many thousands of dollars I've dumped into it over the years. <laughs> it's a twelve hundred dollar car. It's fine. It's how it works. It's like uh, like in business, the cost of doing business. It's the, the yeah. cost of old car ownership. And no matter what, Get it's a, still cheaper than 300 bucks <laughs> or 400 bucks a month for a new car. So, Got to spend car money to make car money. Exactly. You got to lose money to lose money. <laughs> That's how it works. But anyway, yeah, the truck is for sale. Uh, if somebody's handy with a welder, it's a, I think it's a decent truck otherwise. I'm not a masochist, so I'm not going to buy it back. But uh, it did. No. I did have like a little bit of the the twinge of like the feels nope. like, Oh, I had some good times in that truck. No. Nope. Wasn't like, all uh, bad. It's like when somebody like in a movie gets like a cursed object from like a store or something and pawns it off on someone else. Well, know, I mean, free Christine, right? <laughs> the entire plot of the movie Christine. So yeah. it's not that bad, but anyway, it's for sale in Rhode Island or Connecticut or wherever Connecticut. So, Get down there and buy it. Jordan actually sent sent it to me yeah, today. He must some... have missed it in the chat yesterday. He's like, "Hey, I found your old Raider." <laughs> yeah, get some uh, off topic history. It still has all the stickers on it, so that's why he got three grand for it. He told everybody it belonged to this podcast. That's right. It's a celebrity ownership history. <laughs> if I do say so myself, and I don't because we are not celebrities. <laughs> nope. Well. Yeah, so I did that. Um, I looked at the Galant some more. I think I think it legitimately does just have bad gas in it. And I need. To I think there's a serious either problem drain it. now with fuel and longevity because it seems to be cursing more and more people as we talk to them. And you didn't drive that car much last year. Did you ever put gas in it last year? Uh, probably not. Yeah. It's it's probably a year and a half old gas. It in seems it, so. like a year is it. And that's kind of frustrating. I'll, I am going to try to throw maybe some octane booster in it and try to drive it a little bit without putting any like heavy load on it. Try to use some, just kind of dump through it. Cause, cause other, yeah, it's otherwise I got to, um, pull the line and at least I can use ECM link to run the pump. I can trigger it. It'll just run and pump it out. But yeah, once, once you have only a gallon or two in there, the fresh gas will make up for it for sure. Oh yeah, that's what happened with the Starion. So even a half a tank. Yeah, <laughs> but frustrating. So, also, how do you get rid of old fuel? Well, um, I don't know. Last time I had to wait. Unfortunately, it, it, until the town had like a uh, recycling day for hazardous waste. But that meant yeah. I had to hold on to it for like six months. So otherwise, it evaporates. It does eventually evaporate. The the fuel I drained out of the Starion here, I put in a an eight uh, Home Depot bucket, and I put it behind the shed until I could get to a recycling place with it, and uh, it's gone now. So <laughs> it did evaporate. There's just yeah. muddy sludge, probably flammable muddy sludge, at the bottom of the bucket now. So that's all that's in there. So I can put some sand in there and just throw it away, I guess, at this point. But yeah, I. The other thing I was thinking is if I take it, whatever I get out, I could mix in a little bit every now and then with them when I, the Montero is low and then put fresh gas in with it. That truck doesn't seem to care too much. Yeah. Yeah. They're made to run in third world countries, right? So. Yeah. Maybe it'll work. But. Uh, yeah, that's annoying. So I'll have to deal with that. But um, I don't know. What, what do you got going on? Did you. I know you looked at the 
the Volvo. Yeah, so I worked on your car. About that, um, yeah. Thanks. I want to do a little bit more. I just haven't had a chance. I was going to do it this Sunday. I got a little busy. How dare um, you? How you dare you not work on my yeah, car? Yeah. Well, it's funny because I was laughing about it with Naomi and uh, adding up your bill and whoa, whoa, for whoa, whoa, uh, whoa. storage and repair. It's like uh, I'm like one of those car clubs where you store your car. And I, I, I maintain it and charge the battery and wash it. And uh, so, yeah, I did wash it and maintain the battery. But we were laughing about that. And then I remembered that when the Colt needed to come out here, the starter died, like the day the truck got there. Yes, it did. And it was cold and rainy. And you swapped in a new starter outside in the cold, cold and rain. So I knocked 10% off your bill. So you're good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so I took the carbs off because the one in the back was sticking. Like it would not open at all. And then once I finally got it to open, it would not spring closed again. So I took the carbs off um, and I washed it down with a bunch of, as suggested by people on the internet, some ATF to get a lot of the gunk out of it, uh, yep. which worked pretty well. And then I finished it off with some carb cleaner, the aerosol can, and a toothbrush to get like all the little schmutzy stuff off everywhere else uh and the thing looks pretty mm-hmm. much brand new i think the carbs are fairly new honestly they don't look like they, they look have really much new. time running on them um and i have it so that the carbs now squirt fuel out of the jets when you when you uh hit the plunger to make the fuel come out fuel comes out so the carbs work now yeah so i put it back in the car and we car has spark which is good and it has what seems like a pretty strong spark and the fuel pump works because it brings fuel up to the carbs. So all that was working. I had the air filters off. I hit it with the tiniest little bit of ether just to give it a little bit of extra like fuel in there. And still the car would not start. So I did a little more digging. And I pulled out the good old compression tester. And this is where I'm a little bit lost now. Because all four cylinders showed zero compression. Or like 10 PSI. Yeah, it's So weird. for all four to show something like that, to me, makes it seem like something weird is wrong. But I don't know what yet. So, because if, if one or two cylinders were lower on compression, because the car, the car wouldn't run and then have 10 pounds of compression in every cylinder. If it was, if it was wearing no. out. It would have like, you know, 180 in three and 55 in one or something along those lines. And it would run rough yeah, at least yeah. fire off. So I was like doing a bunch of digging, like what could it possibly be? And then going back to the fuel discussion and old fuel, old oils, old gunk in general, we don't know when the last time this car was run was the, ins- the plate expired in 22, but that doesn't mean it was driven. That just means it was registered. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. one of the online theories is it has stuck valves. And if the valves are all a little bit stuck from just sitting, there's a possibility that it would all have, because it's all between like five and 10 PSI. Um, yeah. You know, I, t- I haven't pulled the valve cover off yet, but I pulled the oil fill cover or cap off and cranked it over with the cap off so I could see the cam was spinning. Or sorry, I can't see the cam is spinning because the cam is blocked. But I can see the rockers going up and down. So that means yep. that the cam is spinning if the rockers are going up and down. So the timing chain is not busted. It's definitely turning the cam. I think it actually is gears. So it's even better. There's no chain at all? No, because the cam is down in the okay. side of the block. So I think it uses I thought gears. there was still a chain on it when I was looking at parts online. But nonetheless, the the timing isn't busted. So the 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 cam is obviously spinning if the rocker arms are moving because that means the push rods are going up and down. But it does not mean that the the one you can yeah, see. Yeah, the one I can yeah. see, but again, with all four being the same low compression, yeah. it's a weird failure. So I got to pull the valve cover off, and once I pull the valve cover off, I'll be able to see you know, if the valves are actually moving. Uh, And then if they aren't moving, that's like best case scenario. We'll use the same trick we use with the carburetors and fill the head with ATF and just kind of let it sit 
and uh, see if we can get them to move manually without pulling the head off. That would be that would be ideal. But again, that's not. I don't know that that's the problem either. Uh, I was looking online, and you're looking online, and you found that the the lifters have an issue with these, where they wear out. But again, yeah. they would not go from it running wouldn't... to ten psi across the board. Well, and also they would be closed because the lifters like wear out, and then the push rods That's fall true. down, and they yeah. don't. It wouldn't be open, open the open valves. valves. Yeah. I was thinking about that a lot afterwards. I was like, wait a minute, that yeah. makes sense. It makes more sense to me that some of the valves must be stuck from sitting. Yeah, and I mean, listen, there's only two valves two. per cylinder, and if like one exhaust and one intake, or or, or you know, or whatever combination thereof, and it happens to be one per cylinder, or Maybe all four of them are stuck. Yeah. Who knows? Like, did did they just fall down with gravity after the car was just sitting for a while and just and just stay there? Uh, like, they shouldn't with the spring. The spring should return them, but I'm sure it doesn't have super strong springs because it's not a high performance yeah, race and, engine. You know what? That's the other thing I was thinking um, too. We don't know the history of this engine. Um, there's a bunch of weird race car parts on the car, and it has those brand new carbs. Maybe the some maybe the maybe the Maybe somebody built a hot head for it or put a hot cam in it and it's just not set up properly for that. It's never run with the new setup. Yeah, maybe the valves are out of adjustment. Yeah. I don't that's yeah, a, you that's pull a that theory, valve another you theory that out. I kinda had like so I need to pull the valve cover off. Step number one. It's it's not a super complicated oh yeah. It's not a super complicated no, engine, it's which is very nice. simple. It's just literally yeah. like if you've seen a British car, it's literally just like a yeah. British car. Yeah, it's 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 stone simple. It is the reputation of the Volvo Red Block, I guess. This is it Red Block? I think it is, right? It's there. Yeah, they call yeah. them Red Blocks because they're but all the red. reputation the of that Volvo red. red Block engine or the B20 engine is that you can't kill it. Like you can drain the thing from oil and still drive it for another six months. So I don't see how it could be anything serious. I just think it needs a little bit more diagnostic time. And like I said, maybe there's a stuck valve somewhere, or maybe the valves are so far out of adjustment because somebody didn't know what they were doing when they put it together. I don't, I just don't know. So I'll have a little more time. Today's Wednesday. We're recording. I should be able to get it into it tomorrow after work. Um, if not, I'll be home this weekend for sure to work on it. So We'll have some kind of answer, or at least more conversation about why I don't have an answer for next episode. But no, it's interesting, and I'm I'm not even that worried. It's the like, engines, the engines whatever. are available in like every street corner for a couple hundred bucks. The only issue is it makes it harder to ship, or more expensive to ship, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd like to get it running before then. Um, also on your car. Naomi was concerned about the window being down on the passenger side because we do have neighborhood cats. Yeah. And if you leave a window down on a car overnight, oh, yeah. the car will get cats in the interior and then you'll get cat urine in the interior. And then you have a stink that you never want to get in the car again. So. Yeah. I don't want any of those neighborhood cats. Like no. Your, that, that, that your famous cat, Starion cat Starion. story. <laughs> yeah. So the first night it was here, uh, we put a trash bag over the window and, put it all on so the cat couldn't get in but while i was working on the carburetors she took it upon herself to pull the door panel off to see what was going wrong with the window um so i got the i got the the window crank off she pulled the door handle off the door panel off and we could see that the window regulator moved up and down properly with the with the handle and there were little pieces of metal in the bottom of the window, at the bottom of the door, and a spring in the bottom of the door. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So what it looks like happened is the window channel. That so there's a a metal channel that the glass sits in, and then the metal channel has two holes in it that go into the bar of the window regulator, the two like bars of the X. And it looks like that metal channel over time, just it's unpainted metal and just rusted and fell apart. So the glass is in there. The glass is still good. It does need that channel. The glass goes in, but the regulator looks fine and it works fine. Is it the thing I sent you? I don't remember what you sent me. So I'll have to look again. 
Oh, I thought I sent it to you. It's it's the it's just a piece of like piece of metal, channel the... metal. Like it's a well, this is a this is a piece of metal that the glass sits in that has a little arm that comes off of it with an oval that hooks the regulator. It must be that that sounds so as it goes up and down. It can sounds slide. like what you're looking for. So you can buy them; they're like sixty nice. bucks. So, and I found a video of someone replacing it. I didn't realize that the whole that whole window frame comes off the chrome yeah, or the probably. stainless window frame. It's not integral to the door. No, it goes it goes so down like, with the window. Oh, 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 oh! You mean the around the window? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these these Volvos are set up. They're like an um, uh, early, like a '90s, you know, Subaru, where that's just the door doesn't have a frame, okay. and the frame bolts on. So basically, so ba- yeah, that is just a stainless steel frame just for the window that that provides no structure to the door at all. I hadn't looked that closely at it. So all their strength is in the B pillar and or the C pillar mm-hmm. and the coupe. Interesting. Well, nonetheless, it uh, she cut a piece of wood. We had some scrap two by fours in the backyard, so she, uh, she cut a piece of wood that's long enough for it jammed in the bottom of the door, and has a little channel kind of shaved in the top of it for the window to sit in. So the window is now up all the way. It won't it won't go up and down, but at least it's closed off, so nothing can get in there. Yeah. Nice. Well, when I got my '89 Montero. That window was held up with a stick. Perfect. So the just side, the same so. thing all over again for you. <laughs> so, I mean, when I got a 78 Colt, that the driver's side window was blown out of it. And when I got the 78 to add a pickup, the passenger side window was blown out of it. So it's just a common, uh, common thread here amongst us. So other than that, I did wash the car. I did not look pretty in the yard, all covered in years of grime. So I washed it. Um, after cleaning it, added like two grand of the price. Yeah, I mean, honestly, after two grand of the price, then find out why the compression's down and add another two grand. You never get this <laughs> yeah. car, Andrew. I'm just selling it, and making a profit. <laughs> um, I cleaned it. Um, we knew the paint wasn't show quality before, uh, so after I paint, after I cleaned it, you can see a couple of spots where it's like, you know, there's some. Oh, you painted it too? No, <laughs> there are some some blemishes that you couldn't see when it was really dirty, but. Nothing is catastrophic, so I think it'll uh, it'll clean up nice with a little bit of wet sanding and buffing and polishing, and and the spots are just uh, patina, right? I'm fine yep. with it. <laughs> nope. And I showed you all the spots. Nothing's that bad. It's, that's that's the look I was going for. I I wanted something that's just kind of a, a little, little rough around the edges. A little worn yeah. on the edges. Yeah, it's just like the Montero. Yeah, it's a driver quality. You don't have it's, to worry about it. You take it out and do fun things with it. It's it's part of the charm now. It like looks cool yeah, that way. I, I picture you blasting through the woods in a TSD with this thing. The, uh, you know, it's like the Montero. I was thinking about it when I was driving it yesterday. It has now transitioned from old truck to cool old vintage yep. truck for a lot of like normies. Yeah, for sure really old now like it gets a lot of looks in traffic sticks out so anyway that's the uh that's the volvo update uh one more quick project car update here i was having a very hard time finding the timing cover for a seven bolt 1g 4g63 yeah i sort of found one locally um i picked it up on sunday i knew it was broken so i got it and it's broken but it's broken in a repairable spot where my old one's not broken. So I have two yeah. timing covers that are broken two different places, and I can make one timing cover out of the two, I think. Um, a few months back, Naomi gifted me a plastic welder, the kind with all oh. the, the welding rods and stuff in it. So I'm going to take the old okay. one and the broken spots in the bottom and kind of like deconstruct it and try to re-put it back together where I don't need parts from it and kind of practice on that. And then I need to see if I can make it work that way and then kind of fix it, fix the new one after I practiced with pieces of the old one. So hopefully it'll work, but 
it's cracked. So you know it's the the timing cover on these is two pieces. There's a timing cover, and then there's like the cam cover. Yeah. The ed the ledge that the cam cover sits on has a little chunk taken out of it that's like two inches by two inches triangle. So it's not it's not oh. down in the bottom where it's a huge problem. It's just at the top section. So I can make it work. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I no, I can picture what you would do. You could you can take a little section out of the the really busted one. So there's a seam and and graft it into there's the There's a one. seam along the top. And if I just cut it straight across along that seam with my Dremel and graft it onto and cut the new one at that same spot and just kinda it would be right at that factory seam and it would look totally normal as long as I can figure out how to use the plastic welder. Actually, just before we recorded tonight, I was out in the garage researching the type of plastic it's made out of because I didn't know this until I actually worked for the insurance company I work yeah. for now, but all plastic pieces are stamped with the kind of plastic they are. Oh, yeah. So yep. it has a PP on the back, which is a poly, poly, polypropylene or something like that. So it requires a certain kind of filler rod, which I have, um, and a certain technique to do it. So I'm going to watch some videos on using that particular material and, and welding that material together. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut the whole thing off personally. The only reason I was thinking about I it just section, I would section is because it. it would look factory. You don't see it. It's covered under the yeah, top time and cover. Thinking it right. You are overthinking it. I wouldn't, because that's a lot of work to do the whole thing. I would just cut the patch and then whatever, paint it silver or paint it black. You'll never see it. I mean, the filler rod, I think, is also black, so it'll probably just fill right in. Um, yeah, it's like dark gray on a DSM, but... So this one's definitely black. Just paint it yeah. black or whatever. Oh, is oh it? for sure. So anyway, um, I'm interested to try it. Um, it's kind of a technique I've been looking to play with for a while. Um, these plastic welding kits aren't super expensive. Uh, I think they're less than like 50 bucks with all the material. So I think it's like TIG welding, but with plastic. The word welding is, I think, misleading. You basically you cut like a groove in either side of the piece that you're putting together and you pretty much fill the gap with the, with the same kind of material. And it's, it's almost like soldering. Oh, you know, it's welding. It's like, well, yeah, but it's <laughs> soldering is I like guess. welding. It's all very it similar. Feels, it feels more like soldering, I think than welding. Cause you're filling that gap without having to have like any kind of serious technique. You're just melting plastic in there. So, but you've got a, a heating element in one hand and a, plastic rod and the other so it's kind of like yeah deep welding. i guess so i guess you can go along with that but it also came with the hot staples so i could after i do the repair i would like to reinforce the outside with the hot staples so i wouldn't put the hot staple on the inside because i don't want to eventually fail and fall off and take out the timing belt again <laughs> that would be frustrating so i don't know it should be a interesting experiment that's that's uh, that's this weekend's big plan. That and the cylinder head in the Volvo. So, because then once I have that, I can put the engine uh, together. I mean, conversely, doesn't the upper timing cover cover that broken part? It would, but it goes down too far. Okay. So if you're looking at the face, I was gonna say, if it, if looking it, at the <laughs> face of the timing cover, and then just cut a triangle out from the face, like two inch by two inch. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say if it, if it covered it then just roll with it, but I went to pick it up. It's uh, it was in town actually only about 10 minutes from the house. A guy I've met a couple of times. I know him through Instagram. I've met him a couple of times at the pavilions car show. He has a drag race one G eclipse with an automatic that runs like, I don't know, tens. Um, but he also has like a street, 1G, a street 2G. I went to the house and there was an Evo 3 in the garage and there were like four eclipses in an Evo and four G63 parts everywhere. Did we just become best yeah, friends? Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. So good guy to know. Plenty of parts. Speaking of uh, Drag Race DSMs, did you see that one that's been posted? It's going around. The, one, the rear wheel drive it's one like for a sale. laser. 
Yeah, be cool. But I was like looking at the pictures. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a rear wheel drive converted dragster or DSM. That's not that's not unheard of. And then like I don't know, like some reason I didn't see the top half of the picture, and I like scrolled up, and there's just like a Holly four barrel sitting on the intake manifold. Oh, a four G six three going into it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's NA carved four G six three rear wheel drive. I mean, hey. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's like, that is weird. I, I have this dream of a carbed Ford G63, but it wasn't exactly like that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd go with twin Makunis now, right? Those seem like a If I'm going deal. to ever spend the money on a swap, it's going to have some kind of ITB setup. But yeah, for sure. I just, I, I really like the look of the Weber's versus the Makunis. It's just that... Yeah, but uh, they're apparently cost wise, they're about the same, and supposedly these Makunis outperform. Cost wise, they're cost wise, the Makunis are less. So, twin Webers are expensive by like a couple hundred yeah, bucks, but twin Webers are expensive. But nonetheless, I if I ever do a, a conversion like that, it's going to have like the, the Gen V style throttle bodies that look and sound like twin Webers, but are actually fuel injection. So, anyway, that's or maybe I'll just cut a hole in the top of the intake and put a Holly four barrel on it and call it a day. Yeah. That's the other crazy thing. This Volvo has $1,200 worth of carbs on it. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have the full kit because it doesn't have any of the balancing rods or like the, not balancing rod, but like the, the linkage. The linkage. Um, it just has four, has four yeah, cables to come up with that, it, which is questionable. No, I've, I've found a couple videos online of people using them and some pictures of setups yeah. and I also, oh, I also freed also up have the a, chokes another listener we have another listener named Jordan who uh is just I guess was just helping another Datsun guy set up his car nice. with these so huh. there's some there's some knowledge with how to get the linkage excellent. set up right excellent yeah I, I also I also freed up the choke as well that was stuck on the car so that works now as well Anyway, cool. yeah, so that's my extent of project car stuff. Everything else has been kind of stagnant, I think. But that's something. So. Yeah. But we're getting back into uh, car Absolutely. stuff. Good, good shit. I don't think I don't think there's anything else. I don't think like, so. I mean, I watched the NASCAR race. It wasn't very exciting. It, it wasn't. And uh, I was watching the recording, and then... The Fox Sports Channel quit on Comcast, and it ruined the recording, and I couldn't even watch the race live, so I didn't even get to see it. But I guess I didn't miss much. You didn't miss much. It was a Hendrick Motorsports one, two, three. Hendrick top yeah. three, uh, and they were. I mean, it was their like 40th anniversary of first winning at I Martinsville, mean, you, so they were. People, kind of people were favorite. like, oh, "You couldn't script this," but like, yeah, you definitely could have scripted this. Like they came in one, two, three on their 40th anniversary race with the whole Hendrick team watching. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying it was scripted, but it was definitely like, all right. I mean, Bubba almost I, spoiled the one, two, three. He had like, he was like yeah. eight inches from third place. <laughs> but I, um, I started listening to like, I've been listening to Dale Jr. download every now and then. I started listening to the Hamlin podcast. I listened on my long ride to get those seats sure. the other day. Uh, I, I think, I think I've, I've definitely, I, I agree. Like they need to make the tires yep. fall apart. The cars yep. they need to have actual wear or do, or, or do like F1 and give them hard, yep. soft mediums. Yeah. Hamlin, Hamlin so was talking about strategy. how the problem is this next gen car is so good. And now every team has it, it's has it for figured out. Though. There's no advantage to anything. And it just becomes ball the leader because the car is too close to even pass. And by giving them either more tire wear yeah. or more horsepower so they can wear out their tires faster by spinning them, that would help um, the competition get a little closer, especially on these short tracks. So, yeah, and it and it would make the racing better. Like you want you don't like they need to make the racing good for the yep. fans. They need to make it the drivers want these guys want to be competitive by finding advantages and strategy. Uh but it also makes the entertainment value better for sure because there's passing because that Bristol race was yeah, awesome. Sense. 
So, and the super speedway stuff is always awesome. And just the, some of these short track races have been a little bit, I don't want to say they sucked. They were still entertaining to race because there was still strategy and still stuff going on. But overall, they're not as entertaining as the bigger tracks on the super speedways. So anyway, not a lot, not a lot to say. But about he's that. right. When you get like a, when you get like Joey Logano with a hundred laps on his, he went 180 tires. laps or something like that on his left side tires. And he's like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, I mean, points to you know, points to them for taking the chance and pulling it off, but that's ridiculous. Yeah, I I agree with them. So it's and it, and then end of the day, it's uh, yeah, it's racing, but it's also an entertainment product, and it has to be yep. exciting. Uh, and that's that's the problem that that's why F one is so boring currently, because the one team wins all the time. If F one didn't have it's drama from the TV show. It probably wouldn't be anywhere near as big as it is. So no, that's, that's the one big thing there. So anyway, but, Oh, I also real, real yeah, quick. I, don't... I went to the kickoff drive of the copper state. 1000 was actually Sunday. Oh, um, just like there's pictures on my, on my Instagram page. That's some neat stuff. You kind of get there. You can walk around the infield of Tempe Diablo Stadium, which is the California Angels spring training park. And they have all the cars lined up around the outskirts of the track. And then they uh, have a little special parking area for, you know, special interest, almost like a cars and coffee kind of deal. So I went to that. And then you stand on the street and kind of watch them drive by and hear all these high dollar sports cars kind of accelerate away into their event. So that was kind of cool. So. Good times. But that's it. Didn't do anything else. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, that's it, I guess. You know? I don't know. That's an episode, Andrew. Don't want to drone on about nope, nothing. That's an episode, so, Andrew. It sounds like an episode. We, uh, we're we getting back into Project Car stuff. Hopefully, we'll have some more updates next week. Uh, I'll see what I can get to on the on the truck. Maybe I'll get the part swapped in. I don't know. I get I need some good weather to to do all that shampooing outside. We'll have some so. Volvo updates if nothing else. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I it's it's cool because I keep forgetting, yeah. and then I remember I have it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. I don't car. forget because really it's blocking all my other car, cars so. in the driveway. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I'm mean, whatever. Um, I put it there, but, but it's what it is. I think you like it. So. I do like it. Yeah, I'd like to make it so it runs. I like to rip it around yeah, the block be- a couple times. I gotta, I gotta be careful that you uh, actually. Give oh it man, to me. I'm already in full on Volvo. Like, I want one now. So yeah, I haven't. Ca- I have, <laughs> well, it's right you, in your you sent me a check like... to pay for it, but I haven't cashed it yet. So I'm gonna just credit and keep the car. So it's fine. <laughs> oh, anyway, excellent, Andrew. All right. So yeah, come join our Discord. Yep. We get always fun stuff going on in there. Um, Auto Off Topic podcast on Facebook, Auto Off Topic on Instagram, Auto Off Topic on Threads if you feel like. I'm on Instagram and Threads, Race to Anger. I got some pictures of the stuff I got from the junkyard recently. And uh, oh, there's a fire engine if you can hear it. Um, Brad, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on Instagram at TSISS350. They can find us both sometimes on Instagram at uh, Scale Autocast as well. And uh, on the Discord. Come see me on the Discord. Yeah, I got to set up another uh, build contest so I can finish. I my still need to post the results from the last one. What? All right, yeah. go for it. <laughs> I'll get there. All right, cool. As always, keep the cars analog and aim for the roses. Mm-hmm.